Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Game Boy games on your Xbox Series S or Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So before I get too far into today's video, I will mention you are going to need to have Dev Mode and RetroArch on your Xbox and have it already set up. I won't be showing you that in today's video, but I do have a previous video where I show you step by step how to do that. I'll be leaving a card on screen and the link in the description down below so you can check that out. And once you have that set up, you can come back here and then I'm going to be showing you how to play specifically Game Boy games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. So what you're going to be needing is some sort of external hard drive that you can use and put your games on. Right now I have my Pokemon Red game on here at the moment. And I will also mention I'm not going to be showing you in today's video where to download games. Games are super easy to find and download if you want to do a quick Google search. And I'll be leaving some information in the description down below on how to dump your current games. It can be a little bit tricky, but I'll be leaving as much information down below as I can, but I won't be sharing any game download links. Once you have your game downloaded, it will most likely come in a zip file and that's no problem. We're going to be able to run zip files in RetroArch without any issues. However, I typically like to extract my games into a .gb file, which is another format we can use for RetroArch. Both of these will work just fine and you won't have any performance issues with either. But if you want to extract your games like me what you can do is come and get your zip you can simply right click inside windows and we can click extract all simply click ok and this extract pop up that comes up we will get this new folder and in here we will get pokemon red in a gb file and that's the game by file that we're going to be needing for our retro arch so either of these will work whichever one works best for you is fine a zip file is a little bit smaller in size so that might be a bit better although game by games in general aren't very big so whichever best suits you will work just fine so once you have your games downloaded and are extracted depending on what you want to do we're going to be putting these files on an external drive so currently i have them on my iDrive right now not on an internal drive on my pc what we're going to be doing is putting them on this and then we're going to be disconnecting our drive and connecting it up to our xbox where we're then going to open up RetroArch and open up and sort out these games so once you have dev mode opened up on your xbox you might get this pop-up if it's your first time plugging in your drive it will ask if you want to use it as xbox storage or media storage here you need to make sure you select media storage otherwise it will wipe your drive and you can only install xbox games on here so you need to make sure to select media storage so we can put whatever Whatever we want on this drive. From this point I'm just going to be launching RetroArch from this UI. You can also feel free to do it from launching your home, whichever works easier. I'm just going to be launching it from here. So once your RetroArch launches, what we're going to be doing is be coming to the first section here in the very left. We're going to be coming down to the load content option. We're going to be clicking the A button to go in here. And then if you have it on an external drive, it will most likely be on your E drive. Currently I have my drives partitioned, so it actually shows up on my F drive. So it'll either be on your E or your F drive, depending on how you have your hard drive set up. Once I select this, I can go from Xbox into my ROMs folder. Then from here, I'm going to be selecting my Game by Game folder. And here, as mentioned, you can load it up as a .zip or directly from a Game by file. I'm actually going to be doing it directly from the Game by file. I can select this and then you'll have to select a core. If you select it directly from a .zip, it won't automatically pick up the Game by cores. As you can see, it does here because I'm selecting a .gb file. And from this point, we will have a couple of different options for cores here. For today's video, I'm actually going to be using Sameboy, although you can feel free to select and experiment with these different cores here. Depending on what you want to do, you can feel free to play around with them. But for today's video, I'm going to be using Sameboy. Simply click A again, and then your game will start to load up. Now, it might take a couple of seconds before your game loads up, but once it does, it should run really, really well, and it actually looks really good. For me, thankfully, it also keeps the original aspect ratio, and I think these games actually hold up pretty well, depending on the game you're playing. They still look pretty decent even blown up on a big TV, especially with turn-based games like this. Now from this point, you can feel free to open up your quick menu or whatever action you have it set up. So for me, it's down and select, and then I will open up the options tab right here. What we can do is come down here to the options, and this option file will be specifically for the core we have selected. Here we can set up and create different options files. We can set up different color palettes, so you can feel free to come in here and select different color palettes if you want for your game. You can select your high pass filter. You can select the emulated model. You can disable borders if you would like, and you can enable rumble. So you can feel free to experiment and play around with these. There's not a lot of complicated things going on with this core. It's quite simple overall, but it does work really well. For me, all the default settings seem to work fine here, so I'm pretty happy with this. And I'm just gonna be going back and playing the game for a second. Now, one other thing I would also suggest doing is creating a game playlist. I'm not gonna be showing you that in today's video, although it would look something like this. I set one up previously for my SNES. You can see here it categorizes all the games. You can automatically assign cores to these games and they will show up here 
here with a nice little icon cartridge next to the game as well, which is really nice to see. Again, I'll be leaving a card on screen and the link in the description down below to my previous video where I show you how to set that up. It's really easy to do and it's definitely something I'd recommend setting up. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to play Game Boy games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.